Let's take a look at lesson 2-7, Is That Normal, on page 243. This section covers standard deviation and normal distributions. It's absolutely one of my favorite sections that we do as well. Let's go down to where the group work starts. We're actually going to do the first part of group work together, then we'll do some classwork, and then we'll let you do the other group part on your own. Towards the middle of the page, it says two golfers were competing in a televised competition for a scholarship to play on a college golf team. The scores for each golfer over all six rounds of the competition are shown in the table. If you're not familiar with the sport, in golf, a lower score is better. They ask us to compute the mean score for each player. Remember we did mean fairly recently? We're gonna calculate the mean for both Brittany and G-min. Remember to calculate the mean, you add up all the scores and then divide by how many there are. So in this case, we'll be dividing by six. Let's add Brittany scores. She had a 75 plus 80 plus 72 plus 81 plus 75 plus 77. So Brittany's total score should be 460 divide by six scores to give us an average of about 76.7. Let's do the same thing for G-min. Let's add up G-min scores. She had a 69 plus 77 plus 71 plus 75 plus 80 plus 83. Her total was 455 divided by the six scores. Her average turns out to be about 75.8. If you need to review averages, mean, median, mode, look back a few sections where we did it. Question number two asks us to find the range of scores for each golfer. The range is just the highest minus the lowest. So for Brittany, what's her highest score? Her highest score is 81 minus her lowest score, which is 72. Brittany's range is nine. Let's do the same thing for G-min. What is G-min's highest score? Her highest score is 83 minus what's her lowest score? 69, so G-min's range is 14. Let's go ahead and turn to the next page, 244. Number three asks us, which golfer do you think was the better player in this competition? Which do you think was more consistent? It depends on what you look at in terms of better. Are you looking for the overall average or are you looking for the consistency? Overall, G-min had the better score. Her average was lower than Brittany's, 75.8. But Brittany was more consistent because she had a lower range. So it kind of depends on which way we look at this. So for more consistent, we're definitely looking at Brittany. Best score would be G-min. So to answer this question, we'd say it would depend on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the best average score, it's G-min. If you're looking for the most consistency, it's Brittany. Can you make up four exam scores that have a mean or an average of 80 with the highest score being 100? So what that means is we're looking for four scores with the last and highest one being 100 so that when I add them up and divide by four, I get an average of 80. This would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can play with some numbers until you get something that works. It's actually kind of a fun puzzle. So take a minute, pause it, and see if you can come up with some numbers that work. Hopefully now you've unpaused it and solved this problem on your own. The easiest example for me to come up with, but there's lots of others that work, is 60, 80, 80, and 100. What do you get when you add all those scores up? 
you get 320. And when you divide by 4, you do get 80 as the average. I think we get to do another one of those in number 5. Number 5 says, can you make up four exam scores that have a mean of 80 and a highest score of 84 now? So something like this, but now instead of 100, the highest score I can have is 84. This would be a good time to pause for a moment and see if you can come up with some numbers that work. Like I said, it's kind of a fun puzzle. Hopefully you are unpausing and you've come up with some answers that work. I think the easiest ones for me to come up with are 76, 80, 80, and 84. Going back to question number four, they ask if the scores are close together or spread out. I would go from 60 to 100, which is a range of 40. I would say these are pretty spread out. How about number five? Are they close together or spread out? I go from 76 to 84. That's not too spread out. That's only a difference of eight points. So I would say these are definitely closer together. So here we have two students. Again, if we added these, we'd have 320, the same total divided by four, giving me the same average. So we have two different students getting the same grade in the class, but one of them is a whole lot more consistent with their scores than the other. Question number six says, what do the previous two questions tell you about how there's more to a story told by the data set than just the measures of average? The mean tells us one thing, but knowing the range and knowing some other information can tell us even more. So there's more behind the story than just the numbers. Let's now look at the classwork on page 245. We're going to talk about a specific way to look at what the numbers mean. About the second paragraph down, it talks about standard deviation. Standard deviation, which is often represented by a lowercase Greek sigma, they give the symbol right here, is a measure of how far on average the values are from the mean. A large standard deviation means there's a lot of values far away from the mean, so they're spread out more. A small standard deviation means that most of the values are close to the mean, so they're much closer together. We're going to go ahead and go through the steps to compute the standard deviation using Brittany's golf scores from the group portion of the example. So we found the mean already. We're going to use that number that we found in the previous problem. And we're going to fill in this table as we go. Step one says to fill in the second column of the table, we subtract the mean from the value in the data set. So for example, to do the first one, we're going to take 75 minus 76.7. Go ahead and do that in your calculator, and you should get negative 1.7. Do 80 minus 76.7. You should get 3.3. Go ahead and do that for the rest. You should get negative 4.7. Four point three, negative one point seven, and zero point three. So we've done the first step to find the standard deviation. Let's look and see what step two tells us to do. Step two says fill in the third column by squaring the value in the second column. So we are going to, I'm going to get a different color here. We are going to take this number and square it. The parentheses are going to be important in your calculator because if I square a negative number, I should get a positive number. Negative 1.7 times negative 1.7 is positive 2.89. 3.3 times 3.3 or 3.3 squared is 10.89. Continue squaring each number in the previous column to fill in the last column. Next one down is 18.49. 
2.89 and 0 0.09. Step four then says find the mean of the squares. So basically you want to take the, the answers we found in red, add them all up and divide by six. You're gonna find the average of the squares. So you're gonna add up 2.89 plus 10.89 plus 22.09 plus 18.49 plus 2.89 plus 0 0.09. And I'm gonna do that in my calculator real quickly here. So we have 2.89 plus 10.89 plus 22.09 plus 18.49 plus 2.89 plus 0 0.09. Gives me a total of 57.34 divided by how many values were there? Should be six which gives me about 9.56. Let's go further down the page. The very last thing we have to do now is find the square root of that number we just found. So we're going to take the square root of 9.56. And that ends up giving us 3.09. That is our standard deviation. Let's turn to page 246. They give you a nice description of here of how to make your calculator calculate it. You enter the list and then you follow the directions to make your calculator calculate the standard deviation. You'll see it's down here, 3.09. So I would definitely play with your calculator. Make sure you understand how to make your calculator do it. It is absolutely something you will do in your upcoming statistics course. We're gonna talk a little more about the idea of normal distribution. A lot of things in life are considered to be normally distributed. The question here asks, how many people do you know taller than six feet five inches or shorter than five feet one inch? For most people, the answer to that question is not many because most people are centered around a certain average. Look at the seed pods in the picture to the right. Give a description of what you see. You see that most of the seed pods are between 50 and 51. There's very few on the edges, the 42 to 43, the 58 to 59 many more in the middle. Turn the page to page 247. This phenomenon is so common, in fact, that the data sets that follow a similar pattern are said to be normally distributed. Things like individual sizes of individuals, IQ scores, weights of packaged products, and lifespans of batteries or light bulbs are often normally distributed. The seed pod example only had 100 pods. If there were a whole lot more, it would look much more like the normal distribution. When a group of data is normally distributed, we know that the mean and standard deviation, there's a rule that allows us to estimate how many data values fall within certain ranges. This is known as the empirical rule, and it's illustrated in the following diagram. So way, the way to read this diagram is that when we have 34% and 34%, that says that all data is within 68%, all data is within 68% uh, of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. You're gonna be given the mean and the standard deviation and ask some questions and ask to fill in a normal chart. So they give us an example here. It says, for example, the heights of American men are normally distributed with a mean of five feet, 9.3 inches. As soon as you know that, that's the number that goes in the very middle. And it's really little here, it's gonna be hard for me to write. So five feet, 9.3 inches. To get to the next one above it, I'm gonna take five feet, 9.3 inches and add 2.8 inches, which gives me five feet. And then it gives me something funny. It gives me 12.01 inches. Would you ever say that a person is 5 feet 12 inches tall? No, you would say they're 6 feet tall. So this is 6 feet 0 0.01 
inch. And then the other way would be 5 feet, 9.3 inches, minus 2.8 inches, which is a little easier to do. It gives us 5 feet, 6.5 inches. So we've done number six, we filled in the data. If I wanted to go further to the right, I would add another 2.8, add another 2.8. To go to the left, you would keep subtracting 2.8 inches. Number seven says, based on your diagram, about what percent of American men fall into the height range from five feet, six and a half inches. So five feet, six and a half inches is right here, and it didn't change my color for me. Five feet, six and a half inches to six feet, 0.1 inch. What are the percents? We have to add those two. It should be 68%. 68% of American men fall into the height range between 5 feet 6 and a half inches to 6 feet 0.1 inch. You should now be ready to begin the second part of the group work, which starts on page 248 and continues through page 250.